Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the content patch for the 8th of May 2013. My name is Total Biscuit with today's gaming news and comment. Coming up in the show, the mind behind Assassin's Creed is terminated by Ubisoft. The humble Double Fine bundle is put on sale with a rather unique twist. We'll be talking about that a little bit later on in the show. And of course, the upcoming release schedule for this week. We'll be coming off the show as always with the OC Remix track of the day and it's all coming your way right about now. The lead designer behind the original Assassin's Creed, as well as Prince of Persia The Sands of Time, has supposedly been unceremoniously terminated from Ubisoft. Now this is a strange thing indeed, considering for the longest time he wasn't actually a part of it at all. In fact, he left the company sometime in 2010 and went to work for THQ Montreal. He was involved in a project at that studio called Amsterdam 1666 and also rumored to be involved with a game called Underdog. However, of course, when THQ went under, Montreal was bought by Ubisoft in auction and as a direct result, Patrice ended up being back with the company working on his new project. Now, in an Ubisoft press release earlier yesterday, it was indicated that the company and Patrice had parted ways based on good faith discussions. It specifically said, unfortunately, since the acquisition, the good faith discussions between Patrice and Ubisoft aimed at aligning Patrice's and the studio's visions have been inconclusive. As a result, Patrice has left the company. However, it would not seem that the break is as clean as Ubisoft would have us believe. According to Patrice, who spoke to Polygon yesterday, he said that contrary to any statements made earlier, this morning I was terminated by Ubisoft, I was notified of this termination in person, handed a termination notice, and was unceremoniously escorted out of the building by two guards without being able to say goodbye to my team or collect my personal belongings. This is not my decision. He goes on to say that Ubisoft's actions are baseless and without merit, and he intends to fight Ubisoft vigorously for my rights, for my team, and for my game. Well, this could get pretty damn ugly pretty fast. Now, the original departure from Ubisoft back in 2010 was at least according to Ubisoft as a result of Patrice wanting to take a creative break. However, it wasn't really made 100% clear as to exactly what was going on and whether or not that was the legitimate reason to leave in the first place. Now, he left apparently after his role as creative lead on Assassin's Creed Brotherhood had pretty much concluded. But we don't know exactly how far that went on. Of course, that's Ubisoft's word once again. There is, of course, a lot of speculation surrounding it that Patrice didn't want to be involved in the continual milking, quote-unquote, of Assassin's Creed, but there is really no confirmation as to whether or not that's the case, and it very well might just be populist rumors. You know, it's nice to get behind the little guy and say, hey, he didn't want his creation milked and turned into a franchise and a cash cow. Well, maybe he did and maybe he didn't. It's really hard to actually know whether or not that's the case. It is, however, extremely unfortunate, and I would have to wonder why this is, you know? Just terminating someone and dragging them out of the building immediately is not the kind of thing that happens without cause. This actually reminds me of the Infinity Ward incident quite some time ago. I am intrigued to see where this goes simply because I would like to know, one, what these good faith discussions were all about, and two, why they broke down in the first place. What's the difference in creative vision? What is it that Patrice wanted, and why did Ubisoft disagree with that notion? I guess we'll be finding out more about that over the next few days, so I'll be keeping an eye on this story. There is a new Humble Bundle available, the Humble Double Fine Bundle, which contains the following games. Costume Quest, Psychonauts, Stacking, Brutal Legend if you pay more than the average, and very curiously, two other options. If you pay $35 or more, you will receive Broken Age, which is also known as Double Fine Adventure, so you're essentially pre-ordering the title at that point and getting a bunch of other stuff with it. Also, if you so desire and you pay $70, you'll get a t-shirt. Not exactly the best incentive in the world, but hey. You also get the Psychonauts and Brutal Legends soundtrack. I'd like to point out that that is the 20 original songs from the game, not the 107 heavy metal songs, unfortunately. Yeah, because that would be incredible. That would be worth it just for that, but no, it's just the original music. Not, not to take anything away from that, you know, as far as I'm concerned, Peter McConnell did a great job with that soundtrack, but let's be honest, the Brutal Legend soundtrack with all of its metal, yeah, not even close. 
Alright, so, let's talk about this bundle then, shall we? For one, why is it even happening? We should, of course, consider that Broken Age was a kickstarted game. It raised about $3.5 million and has gone on to be the benchmark that many Kickstarter projects are judged by. They also did a bundle fairly recently, the Amnesia Fortnite bundle. However, that only raised around $250,000. According to a recent episode of the Double Fine documentary, they needed around $300,000 to break even with that bundle. So, as a direct result, they actually didn't cover the costs of Amnesia Fortnite there at all, so they didn't really make any money. Also, according to this documentary, the budget for the game is getting very, very tight indeed. Now, this, I think, is rather worrying because it indicates just how ridiculous things can get with Kickstarter. I'm going to call it Kickstarter creep, and it's a very similar idea to feature creep, the notion of people not knowing where to stop, and more to the point, there's this additional element. With feature creep, you put in too many features, you don't know where to cut it off and actually make the game, right? And that can cause a whole bunch of different problems. With Kickstarter creep, you have to deal with budget concerns as well. So you suddenly get a bunch more money, yeah? You are asking for a small amount of money with that particular Kickstarter. You remember how much they actually asked for in the first place? $400,000. They got 3.36 million. So they had to vastly adjust the scale, the scope, and the expectations of the project because they got almost 10 times as much money. So they said, right, okay, we're going to make Broken Age. We're going to do all this stuff, and it's going to be absolutely fantastic. And now they're running into monetary problems. They don't have enough money to make this game. They, It would seem that they have underestimated the cost of expanding their scope beyond what they originally wanted to do. So now we're in a situation where Broken World is taking a lot of resources, there's a lot of staff on the project, and this 3.5 million that was supposed to pay for the game suddenly has very much disappeared very, very quickly indeed. Now, as far as I'm concerned, you can't really blame Double Fine for it entirely because they were really one of the first studios to do this Kickstarter thing. Since then, studios have got a much better idea of what Kickstarter actually costs and the scale of projects you can make using funds from Kickstarters without going overboard. There have already been slip-ups in the past. Star Command is a good example, for instance, a game that is supposedly fairly good, but even though it had a successful Kickstarter, it did not end up being even a fraction of the game that it was originally supposed to be. There were two Kickstarters for Star Command, Kickstart 1 and Kickstart 2. The second Kickstarter was designed to get it on PC, the first one designed to actually get the game out in the first place. And there's a lot of problems now with that game. There's a lot of reports suggesting that this game is a shadow of what it was supposed to be and that it did not deliver on its promises whatsoever. Now, I think it was going to only be a matter of time until that occurred, but now we're dealing with something that I feel is far more damaging, potentially. The poster child for Kickstarters could very well end up not working out that well. So they're attempting to find more funding by utilizing the Humble Bundle to make some more money. So the actual bundle itself is a story, but we should also talk about the games within the bundle. And it's also something you should consider as to whether or not you actually wish to support Double Fine on that. I have a lot of room in my heart for Double Fine. I think they make great games. And I'm also one of the people that will defend Brutal Legend till the death. However, they ended up in these situations where the games weren't selling enough copies and publishers wouldn't pay for it. You remember the Psychonauts 2 thing where Notch turns around and says, Yeah, I'll make it. I'll pay for it. And then Tim Schafer tells him how much it would actually cost. And he's like, No, 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 no. Don't want to be anywhere near that. And that's what publishers are thinking right now. That's the real problem with it. Anyway, do you want to support Double Fine in that regard? It, I think it's, it's a reasonable way of raising some money. I think it, it fits in with the ethos, and I don't have a problem with it. I didn't have a problem with THQ doing it. I certainly don't have a problem with Double Fine doing it. But I'm just really worried that this Broken Age game will end up being the game that actually breaks Double Fine. It will be the game that simply runs so far over budget and massively mucks up the whole Kickstarter thing that it's going to cause a lot of repercussions around the industry. I'm hoping that's not the case. Anyway, 
that's really up to you. That's an individual decision you have to make. We'll look at the games on there. So what is in there? Costume Quest. That is a rather charming Halloween RPG. I like the Costume Quest. It was pretty fun. It's reasonably shallow, but I think it's got a nice style to it. It's got a reasonable battle system, and it's got a lot of charm. It's a good pick up and play game for a few hours. Psychonauts, the legend itself, the third-person action platformer. Meat Circus is a goddamn nightmare. But Psychonauts is considered to be one of the more original action platformers, and I would uh, not disagree with that. It's a really, really great game. Stacking. Now, this one's overlooked and overrated. I personally hated it, but that was because I don't like the style of the game. It's not because the game is bad. It's a puzzle game, essentially, involving various Russian dolls and the ability to go inside and stack them together and that allows you to bypass various puzzle obstacles because different dolls can do different things and bypass different checkpoints and so on and so forth really really cool brutal legend for pay above the average now the pc port of this is shaky i would recommend playing it with a controller it's definitely not the best piece of work they've ever done although actually double fine really doesn't do that well with ports anyway unfortunately anyway it's it's a great game. I think that it's a game that a lot of people misinterpret. They think that it's very much a God of War style action spectacle fighter, whereas in reality, it's a little bit more like Sacrifice. It's more of a third person action strategy. And it's got a great world, it's got awesome voice acting, funny dialogue, and a fantastic soundtrack. I would strongly recommend checking that one out on that basis. But again, watch out for the PC port, it's a bit shaky. And then of course, Broken Age. Well, we don't know the damn thing about that beyond what they've already said, and... They're asking for 35 bucks in addition to what's going on with the Humble Bundle. And even if you took Brutal Legend at its current average price, which at the time of recording is around $8.12, that means you're still looking for a pre-purchase price for Broken Age of over $25 which is actually 10 bucks more than it costs you to get it via the Kickstarter. Admittedly, Kickstarter is supposed to be a cheaper way of getting it, but still, I mean, do we really know what the price of Broken Age is actually going to be when it comes out? Well, no, we don't. And that in itself actually worries me because, again, that price can reflect the scale of the project. And I'm a little bit worried they're biting off more than they can chew. Regardless, this bundle will no doubt be successful at the time of recording. It was up to over a quarter of a million dollars already which is pretty damn good. It's on sale for another 14 days. And of course, by the time you see this video, it'll probably be double that. So there you go. They'll no doubt do pretty well with it. And hey, if Broken Age comes out and we don't have some horrendous backlash against the title that collapses the Kickstarter bubble, then good. Yeah, that's... I, I don't think there's all that many people that don't want to see Broken Age be released. They're just kind of concerned at the process of which it will have to go through in order to get to that point. Now, for the sake of completeness, I'm going to round up a couple of other bundles that you might not know about. This one's a pretty good one. It's from a fairly recent bundle company called BundleStars.com. This is the bundle number 7, Indie Jam 2. This bundle is in support of a charity effort called Special Effect. However, I should note that only 5% of the profits are actually going there, so that's something to bear in mind. It's a noble cause, certainly. It is supposed to help those with disabilities get a better quality of life, giving them access to fun leisure activities. So that's mostly for disabled kids, which is pretty cool. But again, only 5% profits going to it. It's, it's hard to say. However, the bundle itself is actually pretty killer. There's a lot of good stuff in here. So it's got Two Worlds 2, Shattered Horizon, Nuclear Dawn, Planets Under Attack, Iron Grip Warlord, Holy Avatar vs. Maidens of the Dead, Ion Assault, and X-Blades. That's for around $5.10 right now. That's actually ridiculous. Like, that's a really silly bundle. And these all activate on Steam as well. That's a huge amount of content. Two Worlds 2 is not that bad. It's a bit janky in places, but it's a fairly fun RPG. Shattered Horizon is a really awesome deathmatch game set in space. It doesn't really have a large community right now, but it's definitely fun if you can find a game of it. Nuclear Dawn, same kind of problem. It's very much in the style of Natural Selection, although it did come out before Natural Selection 2. And it is a first-person shooter combined with an RTS, with an FPS-RTS multiplayer hybrid. One player plays the commander on each side, and everyone else plays different classes, and they build the base out across the map while trying to destroy the other person's base. I like Nuclear Dawn a lot. I think it's a really, really good game. I had a lot of fun with it. It's got its problems. Its shooting isn't exactly the best in the world, and there are definitely some balance issues, but I liked it. Planets Under Attack is a kind of Galcon-style swarm defense game. It's all right. It's got a reasonable graphic style to it, but it really is nothing special. Iron Grip Warlord is uh, it's either a first or third person tower defense game. I can't remember which, but that's uh, good for a laugh at any rate. It's also a pretty good co-op game. 
I have no idea what Holy Avatar vs. Maidens of the Dead is, but I do know that Ion Assault is goddamn fantastic. Really, really enjoyable shmup game, great indie title, and then X-Blades. An average third-person action title which gets by almost solely on the fact that you play as an anime chick who is wearing very little clothing. Yeah, not not that great, honestly. Not an amazing game by any stretch of the imagination. But as far as I'm concerned, Two Worlds 2 and Nuclear Dawn alone make that bundle worthwhile. So check it out, bundlestars.com. That's running for the next couple of weeks. So I would recommend that you go and check that one out. All right, folks, let's wrap up the releases for this week. I'll be doing this on either Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on how things go every week, just to give you an impression of what is coming out this week that you should be keeping an eye out for and also what is going to be coming in the next week or so. Now, quite frankly, on the core game front, there's not really an awful lot coming out this week. The standout title is probably Mario and Donkey Kong Minis on the Move, which is coming out on May the 9th. So if you're a Nintendo fan and you like the Mario and Donkey Kong series, which is kind of a puzzle series, quite frankly, it's not one of the more well-known parts of the franchise, but it's actually fairly cool. March of the Minis was actually a really awesome Lemmings-esque game. I enjoyed that quite a bit. Yeah, that's coming out on May the 9th. Aside from that, there's not really an awful lot. This week seems to be fairly light on releases. However, we can have a look at next week, and that's where things start to get interesting. Dust514 has its official release on PlayStation 3 on May the 14th. It's been an open beta for quite some time, but you'll be able to get your hands on that free-to-play massively multiplayer FPS over on PlayStation 3. And of course, the EVE guys are no doubt very interested to see how that turns out, since that is radically changing the way that the EVE landscape works. Big release that week is on May the 14th, and that being Metro Last Light that will be an interesting one to say the least because of course that was a THQ published title that was then bought up by Deep Silver. Now I certainly don't anticipate that that would affect it in any way. It's still developed by the same people, that being 4A Games. The original Metro 2033 was a good title. It was not very well optimized, but it was a damn good title and it had an awful lot to it. It had some nice survival horror elements. A lot of people compared it to Stalker, but really that only works in terms of the actual theme of it. The game itself is nothing like Stalker at all. It's very much a first-person action game with some horror elements, some exploration. It was Bioshock-esque, but it was difficult, which is something that Bioshock definitely was not. But I'm interested to see Last Light. For one, I want to put my system through its paces with a game that should hopefully be designed for high-end PC hardware. Indeed, they are actually recommending NVIDIA Titans for optimum play on that bloody thing. So yeah, that's a pretty big deal. And secondly, it's going to be a nice hardcore FPS that hopefully was designed with the PC in mind. The one caveat I would say with this game is that unfortunately they elected to make the Ranger mode, which ended up being a piece of free DLC for PC, $5 DLC for Xbox with the first game, a pre-order bonus. Now, a lot of people think that the way to play this game is in Ranger mode, that that's the true difficulty mode, and that trying to exploit people by making it a pre-order bonus or then forcing people to pay $5 for it kind of sucks. And I certainly would not disagree. However, it's also not unprecedented. If you look at the first game, they did that as well. So you'll have to make the decision as to whether or not you find that acceptable. Last but by no means least, next week on May the 15th, we will be getting Anomaly 2, which is looking to be very, very cool indeed. That is a tower defense game, but it also has tower offense multiplayer, and more to the point, you play the guys who are being shot at by the towers rather than the other way around. So that's cool, and it's looking really, really nice. I played the beta version of it. I enjoyed it a lot. I also played it at PAX, and I thought it was really cool then. So we will see how that works out. All right, folks, that about wraps me up for the day. Thank you very much for watching the content patch. Before I go, though, I would like to share with you another track from OC Remix, my OC Remix track of the day. In this case, I'd like to highlight another track from Sonic Augmentation, which was a collaborative project between the guys over at Square Enix and Eidos as well as OC Remix. They put together an 8-track remix collection of Deus Ex that has now been officially released on their website. They were releasing it one at a time via Facebook. The album is now complete. It's out on their website. This is my favorite track from it. It's by an artist called Vig. It is called The God Machine Medley. I like this so much that I use it in the background for Total Digestive, my roundup show every week. 
and it is a really nice medley of Liberty Island, Lebedev's Airfield, New York City Streets, Yanatko, Declare Chateau, Return to New York City, Enemy Within, and Versa Life. Yeah. I particularly love the Majestic 12 stuff that's going on in there. It is absolutely phenomenal. It's a great mix. It's a wonderful mix of genres as well. It's not just an easy techno remix. It really does use a lot of different styles. So please do enjoy it. Thank you very much, folks, and I will see you next time. <laughs>